Hello everybody, it's Rotten John here, and today we're in Conan Exiles. We're going to head over to the Wine Cellar Dungeon, which is located behind the tavern where you can talk to Conan himself. Once you find the tavern, you can just run around to the back side of the door, and you'll find the entrance portal there. I'm wearing the Dark Templar armor, epic. It has 1,058 armor value to it. Here's our door here to get into the temple. Show you where it is on the map here. Southeast side of Sepamaru City. Pretty much lower right corner of B7. Over here is your exit from the dungeon, and this is your entrance. Here's a quick look around of what's around the area. So let's jump in. It's a little dark in here, you might want to bring a torch. I carry the Glimmer Moon axe. It gives off a nice little amount of light. First guy you'll encounter is Seth the Drunkard. Little mini boss. A lot of times he'll drop his truncheon, which is basically a steel truncheon with double the durability. Most of the Human NPCs you're going to find in this first part are the Relic Hunter Treasure Seekers. There is a Relic Hunter mini boss down the way here a little bit. They're not too tough. I would recommend your Thrall have at least 5.5k to 6,000 health to fight the main boss. It gives off some pretty good hits. I have done this with a unleveled Sumerian Berserker before he successfully killed the main boss. There are a lot of places in this dungeon to find these treasure chests and the smaller familiar looking chests that you find in the unnamed city. Those chests will contain Kari metal. You'll need 10 pieces of the Kari metal per weapon when you learn the scrolls from fighting the main boss. And you'll need 5 pieces of Kari metal for each piece of each set of the armor you can learn in this dungeon. Total set of each different armor you can learn will cost you 35 Kari metal. Like I said, each weapon you make will cost you 10 Kari metal. You'll need to run this dungeon at least three times to learn the Kari soldier, the Kari weapon, and I don't remember the name of the other Kari armor, but it's basically a light and a medium armor set. Here's the box right here that you'll want. Usually there's three of them here. This time there was only one. So the, the Kari armor is kind of expensive to make. Especially for the armor value it has. It does give you a little bonus, I believe, strength and vitality when you wear it. It's good armor for putting on a thrall or something that when you're out farming, doing things like that. Now, all these torches through here pretty much light your pathway to get to the end boss. I recommend taking an extra second or two to light each one as you find them. I have a separate video coming out of what happens when you die in this dungeon. 
and lighting these torches as you go through is really going to help you if you end up dying to something throughout this dungeon. I've stripped out a lot of the areas that I've searched through. This video would have been over an hour long, looking through every little alleyway, corner, crack and crevice through here for loot chests. You can, you can spend some time in here finding chests. But it's, it's worth your time in the end. One thing I'd like to point out also is if you come into some of these tight spots and your thrall comes up behind you and decides to stand in an opening, you're going to get stuck in there. Then you have to have your thrall unfollow you and you're going to be standing there until a skeleton or something ventures close enough to get the thralls aggro and it'll actually move out of your way then. A few skeletal serpent men in here to fight. There's another torch, just press E to activate it. Sometimes they're a little buggy to get them lit. Like I said, there are a lot of places to search in here. If you take your time and go through all of this, you'll end up with a fair amount of gold, silver, steel. I've come through here before and have had to drop a lot of iron, a lot of steel, just so I could carry a nice amount of hardened steel out of here. These chests are just hidden everywhere throughout this dungeon. There's another Kari Steel box. Looks just like the boxes at the Unnamed City with the fragments of power in them. Got a nice little chunk of gold out of there. You can actually spend some time in here looking around for chests. Depending on your armor set, you can become weighed down with all the loot you find in here real quick. Sometimes I'll complete this dungeon and I'll jump right back into it just to come through and grab some more stuff. I'm constantly looking around. There are a lot of whites to fight in here. The undead skeletons that are glowing. They tend to pop up out of the ground. You get surprised by them every now and then. They typically have the normal white loot drops. Here's the first undead legion skeleton boss you're going to fight. I always just try to get my thrall aggroed on them, let them take care of these guys. You can withstand a couple of their light attacks, but if they hit you with a combo, you're done. You're back at the beginning of the dungeon. They will they will put a hurting on you. And if you get to a point to where you find yourself lost, you can pretty much just move around until you find a white standing around somewhere. They kind of line the path also. You'll run into a couple of these undead kappas. They normally don't drop anything at all. You can chop them up and harvest them if you want bones or rotten flesh, meat, whatever. Another loot chest with just some regular old loot in it. And when you're in this spot here, you can actually jump over that fence. There are more loot chests down below there. 
Here's a little river. It's a waterfall down to the one side. If you're in here and you're fighting and you fall off that waterfall, it's not a big deal. You're just down at the bottom of this path and just run back up to this spot. This is also where the undead Kappa boss resides in his cave. So I try to take care of all these other Kappas and whites that venture in here before I fight the boss. He's got a little bit of punch power to him. But the good thing about fighting this boss is he will often drop the Kari water skin. It's a new item that they've added in with this dungeon. Here's the boss here. I'll pull him out of his cage, get my thrall to beat him up. That's waterfall I was talking about, if you should happen to fall off of it. You just basically end up at the bottom of the path where you started running up the hill to get here. I haven't taken any damage by falling off of that waterfall yet. I'll jump in, help my thrall, beat this guy up. We've got a, a little bit of health. And it takes a minute or two to kill these guys off. If you stand to the back side of them, you can stand there and regen your stamina, regen your health if you need to, and just keep whacking them as you go. He won't turn around and hit you. And there is the Kari water skin. It gives you the equivalent of a total of 17 drinks. And I believe that just counts as points towards your drink meter not an actual 17 uses. But that's compared to seven of the normal water skin. So you could carry one of these water skins and it would be equal to roughly two and a half of the regular water skins. There's all of these loot chests hidden in the water. Even areas where you can go underneath the water, find more loot chests. And as you can see, it's kind of easy to get turned around in this area. But like I said, if you fall off the waterfall, you're right back there at the end of this path. Brings you right back to where you've already run through. You could, you could probably spend an hour alone just running through this area looking in each nook and cranny for loot chests. I've gotten to the point where I've been over encumbered fairly early in this dungeon and have had to drop items I would like to have kept just because I was so over encumbered. I don't know what my Delencia is fighting over there. Maybe we'll go take a look. more loot chests sitting right here. Some just have your standard loot. Some are full of gold and silver. What is she fighting over there? Ah, good job, good job. She's, she's beating that wall up pretty good. It's probably where some of the skeletons come up out of the ground. And the AI is seeing them as there. As you can see, every time these guys hit you or you get shot with one of their arrows, you do get a little tick of corruption added to your health and stamina bar. It's usually not much, but it will add up the longer you stay in here. Every time you get hit, you get a little tick of corruption. This guy, to me, is a little hard to fight just because of the fog in here. You can't keep an eye on your thrall to get them engaged as easy as you can in the other areas. 
he wields a hammer and it it hurts his light attack will give you a nice little ding to your health his heavy attack it'll it'll knock you down quite a bit as you can see my delencia snow hunter she's engaged in them she'll make short work out of them they don't have much health it's just their hits hurt And make your way through the fog to his little throne here. There's some more chests. This one has the fragment of power. Sometimes there will be another one standing here and another one half buried on the steps here. Some more lore scrolls and a few more chests to loot. That's all I've found in this area. I've looked around pretty thoroughly and haven't found any other chest spawns in here. And I have made the mistake of falling off the edge there. Yeah, it's, it's never a good outcome. There's not many places in this dungeon you can climb, which means you can't grab onto the walls when you fall. So it's you fall from a high spot it's usually just a fall to your death if you don't have a lot of health these torches are still a little buggy to activate here's another undead legion skeleton I give him a little whack get my thrall engaged in them maybe hopefully I said they're light attacks take a little bit of your health but they're heavy attacks they can kind of one two shot you and you're done Valencia will make quick work of them as you can see she doesn't take a whole lot of damage with her health but I believe this one that I'm leveling up now has a health pool of 10,400. I think that's where she is at the time of making this video. The next video I'll be putting out about what happens when you die in here. I'm using another Delencia that I was leveling up. And she got unlucky in the lottery of the leveling bonuses. And it's very hard to get her to aggro on these bosses. Now this guy with the sword, he's usually a one, two, you're dead shot kind of guy. He hits hard. But he has low health. I'll get Delencia involved with him. I'm not going to go fight that skeleton. I don't want to pull Delencia off of this skeleton boss yet. Ah, he's going to come over and make my job a little easier. And we got another skeleton shooting us in the face. And of course in Conan Exiles, every now and then a boss will drop through the floor. If you look around enough, maybe move away from the area where you think they fell through the floor, and then go back to it and keep looking around on the ground, the floor. You sometimes get lucky and the AI will pick up that their body is there and you'll be able to loot them. I got lucky with this one and was able to find it. I know he went down in this area here. Yeah, there it is right there. Another fragment of power, some more Kari steel off of them. Some of the skeletons in here, they will drop loot. Most of them will not. I don't know if the AI thinks they are whites and they have a loot inventory on them. You can search around a whole lot more areas back there. For the video, we're just going to run up this hill. Now there's a fork in the road here. You can go to the right 
or you can go to the left. The left will take you up to the main boss dungeon. To the right, we'll go back in here. I'll show you the spider cave. There is a boss spider back in here. I believe it's the, the demon spider, they call it. Sitting right back in there. I usually just give her a shot to the face with an arrow to get her aggro. But a couple of times I've aggroed her too quickly and these other spiders will get in the way of your thrall taking on the boss. That demon spider, she packs quite a punch with her poison attack. Gets you all kinds of crippled up and then these little guys usually move in for the kill. Still have a couple of small spiders around, but Delancey is going to run in and start the fight now anyways. Kind of keep an eye out for any of the smaller spiders that you've missed. I'll stack a little poison on this one just to help the fight go a little quicker. Snake arrows don't do a lot of damage. They do 10 stacks of damage, which is a slight tick down on the boss's health. There's her poison attack. If you're standing in that cloud, it, it does some damage to you, plus cripples you pretty good, poisons you. It will stack up on you quick. Just gonna let her finish off the spider. All I found in here, I've gone through this cave pretty thoroughly, the spider area, are three chests. One on the left, one on the right are just your normal chests. The one in the middle will be your legendary weapon chest. So you come over, hack her up a little bit, get the skeleton key from her. Here are the three chests. Another one right around the corner here. As you can see, the right side, left side chests just have your normal chest loot in them. And the middle chest is your legendary weapon chest that requires a skeleton key to open. Running through here with a shield makes things a little easier. I just usually never bother to pull my shield out. So I, I don't even come in here with a shield anymore. You're going to run back down to the Y in the path. This time you're going to take the left. There's another little Y to the left right there but it just goes to a dead end rock a few steps in this is the main boss dungeon here got a white a couple other skeletons that are going to pop out of here kind of cut them down quick or you can just run past them i fought a lot of things in this dungeon just to help level up my thrall a little more a couple more skeletal serpent men up here and there's also one on each side of this walkway. You fight them or just run past them. I've seen them come as far up into here, but I've never seen them come up into the stairs. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the boss area. The exit is right there. It's locked by a gate. There is a grandstand or balcony whatever you want to call it up here. If you bring some friends in with you, they can go up to this area and safely stand around 
and watch you fight the boss. Once you start the boss fight, there's a shield that goes up along this railing so nobody can shoot arrows at the boss or help you out. Just another little viewing platform up here. No chests or anything have been spawned in here that I've seen yet. And before we go in, I'll check, make sure I've got everything in order. Full on water, full on food. I'll use the heart of the hero to get rid of the corruption that I have so I can have full health. This main boss, his hits hurt, but you can take a few hits from him and maybe just pop some ambrosia, aloe, whatever kind of heal you want to carry. I normally don't bring anything too big in here. I just happen to have some ambrosia on me. I, I forgot to put it away before I came into the dungeon. Usually I only carry three or four of the aloe potions. They're usually good enough to get you through this dungeon. Aloe potion and a little bit of food. Now when you're ready to start this, just come into the arena. Light all six of these fires just by clicking your action key on them. The entrance door locks shut. You're in for the fight now. Guy will spawn in. I usually give him a shot with an arrow just to get my thrall engaged on him. This is pretty much all the fight here. Let your thrall do the work. They can take the beating from this guy a lot more than you can. And at every quarter health that you drop him down to, he's going to spawn in gas rings and then starting at half health he'll start spawning in gas rings and whites here we go we've got him down to three quarters health and here are the gas rings that he spawns in you don't want to be caught in one of them they pack a good punch if you get hit with them you just kind of run around stay out of the gas rings now our thrall is going to knock him down to half health here pretty quick Shoot him with a few arrows just to help speed this up. Here we go. He's just about half health. Should be another hit or two. There we go. He's at half health, so he'll spawn in more of the gas rings now. I find it easier to run in a counterclockwise direction and all of these whites will spawn in with them. You can roll through some of these gas clouds and make it through safely at times. Delencio will keep knocking them down until he gets down to a quarter health before he spawns more gas rings and more whites. Take a quick look at how oh, there he is now. He's at quarter health. If you want to watch for the gas rings to start spawning, there they are. Just make sure you stay out of them. And also, more whites spawning in. I'll give you a quick look back at how many are spawned in now. Basically, this is the whole fight. Just avoid the whites, avoid the gas rings, let your thrall kill the guy. It's done and over quick and easy. Here is the Defari Warrior Army, or not Defari, the Kari Warrior Army armor. As you can see, my thrall didn't take too bad of a beating. You can run around, loot all of these whites, I have counted as many as 18 of them that spawn in after the boss has been defeated and their bodies are on the floor. I think this time there were 15 or 16. I don't remember what the exact count was. But they all carry pretty much same standard loot. Oh, 
like I said, you can get over encumbered really quick in this dungeon. There is just so much in here to find. My base is just to the south of the city here. It only takes me a minute or two to run there and back, so I can go back and depot things. And I'll come back in and do the first part of the dungeon again. This main boss is on a one hour respawn timer. So you have to wait a full hour before you can come back in and even light the fires again. But as you can see, the entrance doors have unlocked again. And to the other side of the arena, the exit doors or, or gates are now unlocked and open. I'm going to eat this guy's fish just because I am. Here's your entrance. Gates are open back up for you. You could run that way back out of the dungeon and fight everything again if you wanted. Everything else in this dungeon is on a fairly quick respawn timer. And this is your exit now. The gates are open. Every time I've come through this dungeon, let me pull my axe out and get some light in here. Every time I've come through this dungeon, I have not found any boxes spawned underneath those steps. Walk out the exit, and here we are, back on the little lake. This is the exit door you come out. Over here is the entrance door that we went into. So that's it. That's the dungeon. Hope it helped you out a little bit. Hope you found it entertaining. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please drop a like and a subscribe as I will be adding many more Conan Dungeon videos in the very near future here. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more.